the area that I think pastors often need help with is, is their healthy self-concept. Um, the danger of this sort of work is people say, well, it sounds so introspective or it sounds like it's faithless. In fact, I think many of the biblical giants were giants because they knew their weaknesses and vulnerabilities and actually they depended wholly on God to fill in those weaknesses. If you look at Samson, the kind of strong man of the Bible, he was fully aware of his vulnerability that actually when his hair was cut off, he would lose all his power. He still fell into the trap of giving away his secret and Delilah chopped his hair off and he lost all power. But you know, it was in that vulnerability and weakness at the end of the story that he called on God to fill in his vulnerability and give him great strength. And at that moment, he had greater strength than he'd ever Ever had before. I think as leaders we need to constantly call on God to fill our vulnerabilities and not feel um, inferior or insignificant or overly vulnerable because we're human. There is a huge um, pressure to be more than we are and to, to be human doings, not human beings. This whole sense that actually my pastor, he's amazing, you know, he's always on call, he always answers his phone on his day off, you know, he's always available to us, you know, he cares for everything that's going on in every single person's life here. Those kind of projections are actually impossible to live by. Actors go on stage uh, for a performance for an hour, they come off stage and then they're an actor again. A pastor goes on stage, delivers a sermon, he gets off stage and he's still a pastor. Now, obviously that's important because you can't turn off or on your calling, but you have to be authentic in that calling, and that means talking about how we feel. It's frightening how many pastors I've worked with over the years, particularly in this area of emotional breakdown, who it transpires, even in 12, 15, or 20 years of ministry, haven't actually got any accountable friends. Uh, and many of them say they actually haven't got any real friends at all. All the friends that they've made are either other pastors and they feel a level of competition, or they're members of their congregations and they feel that they can't really be honest with them. It's that kind of isolation that's often the real um, kind of central pain of ministry and often the foundation stone for emotional breakdown in leadership.